I didn't think I was going to become a scientist when I was a child. I mostly played in the rice paddy and catching tadpoles and just, you know, being in nature uh, it kind of helped me see the beauty of nature and uh, human existence among the, this environment. My father uh, is a physicist, and so he's definitely had a big influence on me. In the end, I got addicted to the same thing. <laughs> That is really what drives me as a scientist in this particular field. The fundamental joy of discovery is another layer. This is an even a deeper layer, uh, what motivates me. By understanding uh, the natural sort of um, system of the immune defense, we were able to kind of trick the immune system into thinking that there is a virus infection and to mount a localized immune response. And these are the types of vaccines that we've been developing uh, called, uh, first one is called the prime and pull, in which you prime the immune response uh, through an intramuscular vaccine and then pull the effector T cells into the mucosa of choice. And the other thing that th it allowed us to do is during the pandemic, we were able to modify this prime and pull strategy. And now we developed the new vaccine called the prime and spike, where we prime the animals or host with the intramuscular vaccine, the, the conventional ones that humans are getting. And then we can uh, sort of recruit the right kinds of T cells and B cells into the nasal cavity using a recombinant spike protein. That's why it's called Prime and Spike. And this two-step vaccine strategy works beautifully to promote local immunity and prevent not just disease, but infection and transmission. Having this kind of strategy of the two-step process in which the priming generates systemic immunity and then pooling uh, allows local immunity to work changes the way in which we think about vaccines against transmissible diseases. The strategy can be applied to so many different pathogens and we're very excited to see that happen. Before February 2020, Akiko Uwasaki was already an accomplished immunobiologist with important discoveries related to the herpes and Zika viruses. When SARS-CoV-2 suddenly upended our world, it also upended Akiko Uwasaki's lab. She instantly transformed it into a center for some of the most important work being done to understand the mechanism of infection and to contain this pandemic. I really love that the nature of a lot of our projects and my projects is highly translational. So I feel inspired that at the end of the day, my work has the potential to truly go from bench to bedside. Research is hard, I and mean, there's many times when we like struggle through data and things like that, but every single meeting with Akiko just kind of revitalizes you and makes you so much more excited about research. And she just has this infectious way about her, about approaching research questions and being excited about the research she does. She has also tirelessly promoted and uplifted the status of women in science, both as a mentor and as a powerful advocate. She will support you wherever you happen to be in your science career. Very collaborative, generous with her ideas, her time. One thing I love is teaching. <laughs> so we teach this course in immunology for undergrads, graduate student, um, medical school, and epidemiologists. I've done all of them, uh, the teaching, and uh, it really brings me joy to teach students and to teach students in my own lab. It really uh, makes me happy that they all transform into this amazing, brilliant scientist, you know, while I'm <laughs> watching them grow. It's definitely a big part of uh, what I love about my job. In the three years since we've had COVID, I have seen close up what a force Akiko Iwasaki has been in the effort to define the disease that we know as COVID-19 and to mitigate its effects. Long COVID uh, really kind of put highlight on existing diseases that have been pretty much ignored um, until very recently, which are these post-acute infection syndromes that include ME-CFS and multiple other diseases. Some of them have an absolutely debilitating condition that prevents them from functioning in society. Many of them are bedridden. Some of them can't even take food uh, through the you know, normal um, routes. And it's difficult to um, ignore uh, such a, a, a sort of outcry of people who are suffering from these diseases. The kinds of the quality of life uh, for these patients are so low, it pains me to um, just really have a deep understanding of what's going on. And it's frustrating because there's not much we can do to help them. 
What we would really like to do is to uh, get to the bottom of the root causes of these diseases. We've already done some research into long COVID immune phenotype and found distinct markers that are different between people with long COVID and people without. What we want to do is to expand this analysis to ME-CFS and understand what people with MACFS um, have in terms of the immune signatures. And ultimately, we want to bring therapies that would help people with MACFS and also other post-acute infection syndromes. And that is a thrill for me, to be able to figure something out and then help people. Yale itself is like a very special place, but I think individuals like Akiko really make it that special place. She will tirelessly continue to do this work and richly deserves this Elsa Kroner Fresenius Prize for medical research. It's been amazing to grow, and congratulations to you, Akiko, for sure.